Hello and welcome to episode seven. In this episode, we are going to learn how to do selections around animals. So consider something with fur. So it could be the lion that we're gonna do, but it could be a monkey, a cat or dog, um, whatever kind of animal that has like a lot of hair and you know, fairly consistent fur-like hair is important to understand here. So let's start off by going ahead and selecting our images. So this is going to be our lion image right here. We actually have two lion images to work with, so let's grab the other one. All right, kind of like him a little bit better with his tongue sticking out. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our image that we want to composite with our lion, which will be this truck that has a little bit of a safari game truck feel to it. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now. The first thing we want to do is start off by creating a selection around our lion. So the challenge is trying to recreate the hair and get a furry look to an animal when you've selected them. So we could use some of the tricks that we um, do for hair on, on humans, but there is another technique that you can use um, with a brush that is already provided in Photoshop. So we're going to try that. So we're going to go out and grab our quick selection tool. And what we want to do is make a quick selection of our lion trying to avoid getting the hair. So go ahead and kind of grab everything that has a nice outline. We're going to get this a little bit cleaner in a second. So right now we're just sort of broadly grabbing uh, the lion. Come up here, grab this side and his very large paws. Okay, so now that we've got this rough selection, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in using Command or Control Plus so we can get a, a better look at him. And one of the things that we wanna do is push out as far as we can up to the edges of the hair, but also not out beyond the hair like we are here. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and hold the Alt or Option key, which now turns our um, selection brush into a negative selection. And that will allow us to push back a little bit around the hair of the lion and fix our mask along his back. And up here on the paw. And then around the edge of his paws here. We'll go check out his tail a bit because we've got some grass and some of his mate up in our selection and we don't have to be perfect here because we can use the quick uh, selection tool that we've played with earlier um, to clean this up so we'll do that uh, in just a second so we've got a pretty good mask oops missed this I'll push this back a little bit we've got a pretty good mask started so now we're going to go ahead and choose the quick selection tool this one which will light him up in red so we can actually see what we've selected. And then with our brush, we can start refining the selection. So I think we've got a pretty good selection, but we have too much right by his paws. So we'll change our brush to white and then just paint backwards here to get rid of the selection on the cement. All right, let's... Uh, Look around, he looks pretty good there. Now we need to add a little bit here on his hind quarter, so we'll go back to black by hitting X and just fill this in a little bit, and then go back to white to remove a little bit on the grass. His paw looks pretty good, and his tail looks pretty good, except for right along this edge where we've got some more grass. So now that we've cleaned this up, We are ready to get our marching ants by hitting the quick selection tool again. And we are set. So good behavior is always to select, uh, save your selection just in case something goes wrong. So we'll go ahead and save the selection as well as lion. And now we can actually go ahead and choose the mask tool to create our mask. So as you can see, we've done a pretty good job of selecting around our lion. Um, although his hair looks a little crazy, but that's exactly what we're gonna work on in this tutorial. 
So now that we've got him all selected, let's go about fixing this mask. Now the way we're going to do this is actually to use a brush, like I said, that's provided in Photoshop. So we still have our brush tool selected, which is fine. We are going to ultimately switch our mask back to white because we're going to be adding to what we see. But what we really need to do is pick the right brush. So if you come into your mask, uh, excuse me, your brush selection tool, you'll find that you may have different brushes and that's fine, but what you're looking for is this one right here. It actually looks a little bit like an eyelash and it should be labeled 112 or 112. Now it, you might have to move around within your uh, brush selection tool because it may not be showing up in the exact same place as mine, but um, you, will, you should be able to find it. If you can't find it, then what you want to do is come up to um, the little sprocket at the top, choose load brushes, and then that will allow you to browse over to your Photoshop folder and look for the brushes there. And you go to preset and brushes to find those and then you just hit load brushes and all your brushes should come in. But this is a pretty standard brush so hopefully it'll be there for you to select. So we're going to go ahead and select that and then just click out of uh, toolbox and come back into your uh, image. Now one of the things that we're going to need to do is change the properties of this tool. So we want to go ahead and select on our brushes. Now if you don't have this in your uh, docked in your toolbar like I do, you're going to want to come to window and then say brush and brush presets so that you'll so that the, those will appear for you. And once you get this, you're going to be able to change the aspects of how this brush functions. Okay, so one of the things that we want to do is make sure we've taken off color dynamics, off transfer, and off smoothing. We're not going to need those. What we really want to focus on are, is the brush tip shape, shape dynamics, and scattering. So right now we're in brush tip shape, and that's fine. We're going to come back to that. We want to look at the shape dynamics. And you can see here in this panel, in this pane, that you can kind of get a sense for how the brush is going to lay down uh, as we start using it. So you can change its roundness. I'm going to thin that out a little bit. You can change its roundness jitter. So, and then the angle jitter. So we don't want the hair to come out looking like that because that's not how it's going to look on an animal. We really want it to sort of lay in the same direction, although not perfect. And then you can, you know, sort of change the diameter. I've got this pretty down there pretty good. And also size jitter. So, Got to play with that a little bit and you got to practice it doesn't it's not always the same settings so how do we want this scattered well we don't really want it scattered again that doesn't make sense right because the fur is going to be a lot closer to the animal than this so in this case we have our scatter to be very minimal we do not want it to scatter very much you can have the count how many you want how few you want um, at least on his mane his hair is pretty loose whereas on his back here we might want it to be a little bit tighter so we can always come back and change this and then we have our count jitter so just how many so now we can come back to the uh, the brush tip shape now the shape looks pretty good we have our spacing do we want a lot of hair a little bit of hair uh, again for his mane we want this to be you know fairly scattered so we have a little bit extra in the spacing here and then the next key thing is just the angle so if you look at um, over on the lion you'll see that the brush right now is not going maybe that makes sense for the top of his head but it's certainly not going at the right angle for down the back side of his mane and it's completely wrong for the left side of his face or our left side of his face his right so in which case we would actually flip the axis so see just by flipping that axis now I've got the tip going in the right direction but the angles wrong so we're gonna have to make changes as we go so that this makes sense on him so we'll start off with this side since we've already flipped it we're gonna go ahead and as you can see you can change the angle so what we need to do is experiment to where we get the angle facing of the hair facing in the right direction so this is a pretty good angle now obviously that hair is way too big so we need to break it down see how large it is and it's jumping all over the place that's not what we want and that's because we actually have a size jitter so we don't want a size jitter so now we need to step back to get rid of it come back over to the shape dynamic and the size jitter is way too high so we need to actually bring this all the way down we want to set the size of the um, hair itself now to get the brush back to a decent size we just have to hit the left bracket which is what makes our brush smaller okay now we come back to our brush tip shape work our angle a little bit and now we can start 
painting in. Now, if we don't like the end result, we can just, you know, step back, which is control Z and start painting in. Now, this is a slow sort of and a bit tedious process that just is the way that it works. So we uh, just need to take our time as we go through it if we want it to look, you know, realistic. So I am actually going to pause the video uh, as we go through this in a minute. Now, see, in that case, I just added some that had grass, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to back that out, maybe get a little bit closer to him. Okay, so now bring this back up, go back to brush tip shape, and start moving around this other area. And this is just a kind of, you gotta test it back and forth to see what makes the most sense. Now a little bit of green here is not gonna be a big deal because ultimately he's gonna have color behind him so we don't wanna worry it too much. So we're gonna go ahead and um, sort of make the hair stand up as we come around the top. And you can see that his mane is starting to fill in pretty nicely. And that's partly because the, the mane was already there. Um, we haven't really, we're not doing anything, but what we are doing is just masking in bits and pieces of it instead of sort of a big broad brush stroke. Um, and that's why it feels like it's hair as we go through this, because it is, but we are only bringing in little parts of it. Now, we've kind of gotten done with that side of his head, which is fine. We need to flip again so we can go down the back side. So to do that, we uncheck flip the X axis, and now we work this side. Doing the same thing along the way, which is starting to tilt the angle so that it follows along nicely and with what would feel Oops, that was too high. Uh, normal for his mane as it's going down his back. Straighten up my angle jitter a little bit because it's starting to stick off the back of his hair and head in a bad way. Not what I want. Fill in maybe a few more hairs up here. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And we wouldn't have been able to create this. There's almost no way to make this selection make sense, um, even if you were to use some of the other hair techniques. There's just too much here, and he's just too closely aligned with the colors in his background to make that look normal. Now, as we go along his back, it's really not going to be much different, except for we're just not going to stick out so far because we just want it to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to take down the brush size, maybe even have less space, and now we can just kind of give him just a softer edge right around this back on his fur because, you know, he doesn't have a straight sort of line there. It wouldn't make sense for him to be uh, so defined. Holding down our shift key, we can move him a little bit. Keep moving the hair angle. And just finish out his tail a little bit. Oops, too much down there. Back off a little bit. Okay, let's come over and check out his front. We have a little bit of hair here that we didn't address, so we're gonna go ahead and flip this angle again. Make it a little bit larger. And make our spacing a little bit more. Oops got the wrong color there we go let's do a little bit here so this is softer edge all right so I think he's actually looking pretty good and that was actually pretty fast so we've gone ahead we'll look at him further out but look at that he has a full mane and everything 
looking good. All right, so our next step is to uh, bring him into our truck scene. So to do that, we wanna go ahead with um, our lion and our mask. We're going to go ahead and select the V key, which goes from the brush tool to the move tool. We're gonna left click, hold on the lion, drag him up, hover, and then drop him into our scene. Now, as you can see, he's definitely bigger than the truck, which is uh, somewhat to be expected just because the perspective of these um, images was a bit different. But once we've dropped him in here, we can start getting him positioned where we're gonna want him, and we can start sizing him properly. So to do that, when I size, I actually like to make an image um, a smart object because it allows me to change the size of the image without losing pixels. So for instance, had I not made him a smart object when I uh, downsized him, he would, and then if I decided I needed to bring him bigger, I would have lost pixels because when you reduce the size of an image, Photoshop actually just drops it gets rid of the pixels, it's less to manage. So now we're gonna go, gonna go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, grab him, and sort of place him on our vehicle with his paws hanging over the front. Now, his tail doesn't look quite right, and he didn't have fur on his tail, so in this case, I think what we're gonna do to handle that is actually go ahead and just mask his tail out as though it was like laying off the backside. So to do that, we can add a mask here, choose black, come back up to our brush tools, select a round brush with a little bit of hardness in it, and then just mask out his tail. Now, one of the things that we would wanna do here is to create a shadow to make him a bit more realistic because he doesn't look like he's three-dimensional uh, compared to the um, truck. So to do that, we would want our shadow to be below him and on the truck. So to create a shadow, we would go ahead and uh, go back to our truck layer, the background layer, and hit uh, create a blank layer. We would have our brush tool and go ahead and make sure our foreground is black. Now I like to do this with it at full opacity. Um, you don't have to, you could certainly come about this in a different way by making it uh, less have less opacity and just painting in at a lighter thing but i actually think that sort of creating the shadow to start with with uh, the darkest is easiest and then now that we've got that we will select say filter blur and use uh, gaussian blur to start the blur process too much So that's kind of getting it a nice fall off, and now we can change our opacity to get the effect that we want. And that helps him look a little bit better. Now we actually do have this sort of weird um, outline or halo. So for that, we're actually gonna go back to our uh, smart layer of our lion. We're gonna double click the smart object to come back into uh, the original cut and we are going to modify this mask to get rid of the halo. So to do that, we're gonna select the mask, choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and in this time, we only want the pixels to be two pixels, make a soft edge, and we're gonna hit OK. So now he looks a little soft. It's not what we're quite going for, but um, from here, we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, image adjustments and levels. And now to get rid of the halo, all we need to do is back off, or bring our darks down towards our lights and hit okay. And that should help us get rid of the uh, halo around the edge of his foot. So now when we hit uh, exit, it'll ask us, do we wanna save our changes? We say yes, we want them saved. And now he doesn't have such a glowing line below him, but he still has his nice um, uh, hair coming through, his nice mane showing through. So that's a pretty quick way of bringing these two images together. Now, if we wanted to, we could do something similar. This is a bit better image of the female lion. So if we go ahead and use our selection tool again, Go ahead and make this image just a little bit tighter so we can see more of her. We can set, start our selection. 
And for what I want to do, which is drop her in the driver's seat, I don't really need the whole animal, so I can stop here. Go ahead and put on my quick mask and just do a quick double check of the mask that I'm creating to make sure that I am satisfied. Fix it around her ear a little bit. Pick up her shoulder here a little. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and quick get click the quick mask selection tool again so that you get your marching ants. We can save this selection just in case by calling her female. And now create our mask. Now we've done exactly the same thing that we did with him. Now, if we think we have a halo, we certainly can apply that same technique at this point instead of after. So if we do that, we're going to go ahead and say filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Make sure it's two pixels. We hit OK. Now we choose image, adjustments, and levels, and go ahead and drag our darks down to our lights. That makes a tighter selection around her to start with. We can hit OK. Now if we want, we can certainly go back and choose the brush again and I don't want to actually come to it that way. Let's come back up here and select it. Now, that's because we already had some of these settings built in. We take off transfer, cut color dynamics, and we can now sort of just work a little bit of the hair around her ears where it should stick up a bit more. Make sure our foreground color is white. And go ahead and add in just a little bit Oh, I've got scatter dynamics and went all the way back up, so we have to change that. And we'll back off the brush, change our angle a little bit on our brush tip. And so first we'll work this right ear. And we can flip, come back over. Do a little bit of work on her left ear. And for the most part, I think she's probably okay at this point to not uh, go further with this, but you could certainly go around the whole animal again like we did in the first place. We hit our V key, we pick her up, we drag and we drop her into the image. Now in this case, we want her to be inside the truck. So to do that, we wanna go ahead and uh, free transform her She's a little bit big to be inside the truck at this point, so we're going to go ahead and bring her down in size a hair. I'm going to set her up. Let me still make it a little bit smaller. I should have made that into a smart object, so don't get into my bad behavior, but uh, we can go ahead and make that a smart object now. And by doing it now, we can actually mask, add another mask to hide pieces of her that we want to uh, hide. So we go back to our brush, go back to a round brush, a medium, actually pretty hard on this one because we're gonna be masking her out around um, the truck which has defined edges. So go ahead and start the masking process here. image, transform, and perspective. So I used perspective just to sort of set her back and make her make a little bit more sense as being inside the truck. So I didn't have to do very much. But now we've dropped her into the cabin. And from here, we would just start processing the image. So we could, uh, you know, crop the image if we didn't want to deal with the sky. We could certainly add texture and more texture to the truck and change the light like we have in other um in other tutorials. So really for now, I, this is where I wanted to get you, which was teaching you how to use this brush feature because a lot of us take pictures of our dogs and our cats or we go to the zoo and we take pictures of monkeys and then we wanna to try to get these animals out of um, their environment, which may be a zoo environment where there's cement around them or wire fences and all this kind of stuff and we wanna put them in what feels to be somewhat more natural. And the brush tool using that um, that brush that looks a little bit like an eyelash here in 112 is 
an excellent way of doing it. So I hope that trick has helped you out. I look forward to seeing the images. Take care and thanks for watching.